And I just want to say what a band you have. Amazing. Matthew, where are you? Are you awesome? And uh, let's give a shout. And then I do want to assess special shout to shout out to all the sound people, the yeah. technical crew, the, 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 everybody that helped me from the moment I arrived here. I gave them a last minute. You know, I see all this complication, but they did this brilliant. Could we give them a hand with all the sound people and, and the video and everyone? So I really appreciate that. I'm a, I'm a musician. Uh, I was born in, in uh, Bul Bulgaria at the time, communism. Um, and uh, m my father was a violinist. He was actually uh, serenader back in the 40s or uh, 30s. And um, when you propose, uh, you, you bring a violinist. And that was just the tradition. And, and my, my, my father made the girls always cry and say, I do. So, so he was really famous for that. You know, like, uh, so if you want a girl to say, yes, get my dad to serenade for you. <clears throat> anyway, that, that's, that, that was really a wonderful gift. Mom married him because of that. Eventually, they, they separated. They divorced. My, my, my grandpa was a banker, so he made my dad go into the banking business, and that kind of ended the, the love affair, and uh, unfortunately. But Mom, uh, because she missed that violin thing, so she made me be her violin player. And so she, as, 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 since I was five years old, she made me play. And, uh, of course, uh, at the time, I was frustrated. I did not like all that. Even during the holidays, I kept playing, you know, to be good. You got to play. Uh, but you can't say no to your mom. <laughs> I'm grateful today, of course, you know. And uh, uh, so when I was about... 12 or 13, 14, my, my early teen, uh, we, uh, and of course, uh, to set you up at the time, communism, I hope you're not falling for that, because it's just a terrible um, political, it actually is not political, it's, it's anti-Christ establishment, the, the real core, if you, if you don't know that, study uh, Karl Marx, who the original for the communism, study his philosophy, and study his poetry, excuse me. In his poetry, you realize that he's actually a god hater, a very bitter, uh, God-hating man that his poetry says. He says things like, um, I, I hate you, God, and, and uh, I'll, I'll hurt you by destroying the people you create for your glory. This is one of his poems. And so he was a, a bitter, apparently, he's a Jewish man, but apparently he has some experience with, with, uh, with uh, in Christian, his mom and dad were believers, and somehow he became, he at first was on fire for the Lord, and then he became bitter for some reason. I don't know what happened, but then he created this system, antichrist system. Anyway, so I was born in that system, and Lenin, uh, the Russian leader, was supposed to be our daddy as young people. I did not like Lenin, and, and uh by, by the time I was 14, I heard about another Lenin, John Lennon. I like that Lennon better. <laughs> I said, that, that would be my daddy. I like it. So me and three boys first started the first rock band in Bulgaria. And uh, really, we weren't any good, but there was no way to prove it because there was not another band to compare. We were the first one. <laughs> so eventually, they got better and we put us on national television. And of course, um, there's only one channel at the time in Bulgaria, 65 like on my channel, so there was nothing else to see, so everybody stuck watching us, the Silver Bracelet Band, and overnight, we became the number one band, because there was no number two at the time, <laughs> so we dominated the charts, uh, kind of for a while, eventually other bands came up. Anyways, um, uh, the communists at one point realized they made a mistake, because we were stirring young people for freedom, and uh, they, they shut us down publicly in front of our fans, it was embarrassing for a teenager, but that pushed me to want to get out of Bulgaria, and, and of course, to get out, you have to really escape. Because if you remember the Iron Curtain, how many remember that? Lift your hand if you remember that curtain. Well, way more than America. America's forgotten about Iron Curtain, but you're closer here. So it wasn't just Berlin Wall, but it was the entire Europe was divided. And uh, I made it across through a, a very dangerous uh, journey, of course, and I was smuggled by the Polish black market, made it to uh, Vienna, at the refugee camp and eventually got accepted by America to come and be, go to America and be a citizen. And I expected to, be f to feel free when I got to America, but I, I didn't feel any freer. Um, and went all the way to Hollywood pursuing rock and roll career. And in Hollywood, it didn't turn out to be what I was. Somehow these stars on the boulevard 
was shining in my mind and stuff. And of course, I got there, and they were actually very dirty. Hollywood and Boulevard and, and Vine was a very filthy place. Stars were, had puke on them from the winos. Prostitutes were walking. Um, anyways, here in Attic. So I said, this is, this is not turning out to be what, what I expected, and it's not worth risking my life. I mean, I actually risked my life to, to get out of the communism. So right at that really low point where my dreams sort of collapsed and where else should I go, um, the, the Jesus people, I don't know if you heard about those uh, 60s, early 70s, the whole revival, the Jesus people was called, the Jesus freaks, whatever you want to call them, but they were former drug addicts and, you know, they gotten saved and they were radical for Jesus. They were on the streets and sharing the gospel. And Jesus loves you. He really does. <laughs> he died for you, you know. And I'm going, what are you on, you know? <laughs> they go, no, we're not on any drugs we used to, but now we, we got Jesus, and he loves you. He really died for you. And I was like, whatever. And good thing they got an accurate word of knowledge in operation. So the Lord spoke to them and said, don't talk to him. He doesn't get anything. Just feed him, offer food. So they offer food, and that was really an accurate <laughs> word that, for me, you know, and and uh, they began to cook. The, f the, the food was wonderful. And so I kept going back uh, at night uh, for the dinner, free dinner. And my mind kept saying, there's no God. I don't agree with anything. I don't know what they're talking about. But my belly goes, oh, yes, there is. Get back in there. So, <laughs> so it was one of those tug of war thing. And finally my belly won uh, in a sense that I, I got, uh, I feel guilty about doing this, eating their food. And, and I feel, I'm, I, that's it. Tomorrow, uh, tonight is the last dinner. Tomorrow, I'm going to back to Hollywood. And because I don't really believe in anything they're saying. Of course, there's no God. But out of respect for all the cooking, <laughs> two months of cooking, out of respect for the cooking, I'll just give it one chance to about this the, the God. I know there is no God. But anyway, so I'm going on the side of the mountain. This is north of Los Angeles in a little town called Ojai. Actually, it's a very occultic city, but I got saved there because the Lord was so uh, strong through these young believers. Uh, and formerly, they were all drug addicts and stuff, but released um, from the jails and the, and the prison because they were so uh, such a transformed bunch. The, the guy that led me to the Lord was actually in $500 a drug habit. They were ha carrying gun and robbing people, you know, to feed his habit, ended up in jail. But the transformation was so powerful that the judge released him on, on, at that little ministry house because they saw more effect the way they were changing people than the, the jail system. Anyways, um, I'm going inside the mountain, and I'm going, I don't know what to say. This is stupid. Say something, get it over with. And a thought came to my mind to say, God, do you exist? And, of course, I go, well, that's a good way to prove he doesn't. Just say it and get it over with. As soon as I say God exists, the presence of God fell upon me like a blanket, literally, like a, a, some sort of a quilt. And I could not see it, but I could feel it and even change the acoustics, you know. It, it was the strangest thing. And I'm going, what is going on? What is this? And the more I talked to this quilt or this blanket, the thicker it got, it got closer to me. And the thought that maybe there is a God or there, this, this could be God just, just shot right through me. And I, I literally collapsed from the discovery. And on the dirt, you know, no catcher, nothing, just boom, I fell. And, and I began to shake for the rest of the, the, the afternoon. got dark and got cold. And all I want to say is, is, whatever this is, I want to know everything about it. And so the faith that there is a God somehow came. I don't even know how to explain it for the longest time because I have absolutely no faith. But you know the, the, the wonderful thing about faith, that we're saved by grace through faith. And, and uh, the wonderful thing is that, that faith comes. So if you don't have it, um, of course, on your own, you have no chance to, to possibly please God without faith. It's impossible. But the, the, uh, the good thing, the good thing about faith is that faith comes through hearing. So as long as, if you don't have it, that's okay. As long as you know somebody who does have it and who likes you. 
And this is what happened to me. This, these guys, these few drug addicts, performerly down there, Jesus freaks, they liked me. They started loving on me and started cooking for me. And, and so in my case, faith come not just from hearing, but also eating. <laughs> you know, because it wasn't the normal hamburgers. And, and they lay hands on that. And, and the food started coming in me, you know, and started talking. <laughs> I don't know about you, but faith talk, I mean, food talks to me and, and says, this is good. I like it. So I began to accept them, not what they're saying, but what they're cooking, what they're doing. So faith comes also in the way of hamburgers, in the way of love. Amen. It's, it's not just words, but words that are com- accompanied by, by, by deeds and paying attention and honoring me and talking to me. And somehow, they infuse a sense of value yes. to me. Uh, uh, like, like, I didn't believe God, but you know, God believes in me. God believes in people. Yes. Amen. And, and, and the way, the power of Christianity is when we receive how much God believes in us and accept him. And then we see how much he believes in everyone else. And through us, God imparts the faith to the next generation amen so that's how i i got saved by grace of course his grace through faith and even that was a gift given to me from those who had it does that make sense so this is a power evangelism and 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 increases our power of, of affecting and influencing people increases as we as we receive his faith in us God believes in you. You could trade the word faith and love because they're, they're, they're empowering each other. But it could say, for God so believed in you. It could say, God so loved the world. It could say, for God so believed in the world. Would he die for someone he doesn't believe? Absolutely not. He so believed that he bled to death. We were just in, in, uh, in Israel as, as we flew in. And last, yesterday actually is the last day. And we climax with the, the resurrection, with the, uh, the garden tomb. And you can see at this, at this place, the, the, play, uh, the place called the skull, the, the Golgara on the skull. And, and, uh, and I think it was actually a British person, believer, purchased a piece of land right there where that skull is, where they're, they're visible. And uh, amazing company, I think 100 years ago, something like that. Because prior to that, the, the Orthodox and Catholics and these people's site uh, was the, the Holy, uh, Holy Sepulchre is called a church that supposedly they thought that that's where Golgotha was. And uh, I mean, no one really knows 100% because it's so close. But the, the reason I, I, I believe that, because I've been in both places, I feel the anointing uh, of Jesus, the anointing of the Lord as, as you stay in that place. It's outside the wall where they throw trash you know and he was actually crucified on a, on a very street not high hill but actually just 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 right there where you could touch him and spit on him you know that's how they criminals they they, they crucify him very close so everybody can express their you know and of course he was the savior of the world taking the trash taking a trash upon himself and and uh, all that and so it, it's just phenomenal place well and then of course Close next to it is that garden tomb where, where uh, he, he was buried, you know. And uh, uh, that's where the Bible s- comes alive in a such a way. And, and uh, of course, in, in Romans chapter 6, it discusses uh, what his death accomplished for us. Um, in the sense that, um, do you mind a little bit of that uh, it's sort of doctrine, but it's really f- for real and for me because, uh, you know, in Romans 3, 4, and 5, which, which changed the world with these three chapters, young, young Catholic monk discover the power of what Jesus did to, to justify us. You know, the whole, uh, th- it's really three chapters changed. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't this young monk discovering what the Bible says in these three chapters, you know, about that we're justified by, by grace through faith. Sola gratis, sola, sola uh, fide, uh, sola scriptura by the scripture alone. He proved that we, we have at a time mixed in the, the, the grace and the faith of God with different works and things like that. So he, he uh, uh, no, he says that we are saved by grace alone. 
sola gratia, by faith, by God's grace, by faith alone, by sola fide, only through him. In fact, that is a gift too. And uh, lest anyone should boast in their own salvation works, it's, it's <clears throat> by childlike faith, by grace, and, and then uh, sola scriptura, but the scripture, what's on the scripture? Because they were adding all these other man-made doctrine and so he, he, he exposed that. He didn't want to split the Catholic Church. He wanted to strengthen it and help it. He was a devout Catholic, but ended up splitting because the truth began to reveal um, and that the church didn't accept his uh, revelations. They were saved by grace alone, by faith alone, by scripture, by sol- sola Christus, by Christ's sufferings alone, not ours, but his suffering is what saved us. And then by sola gra- glory, which is God's glory. So all this amazing revelation. So we, when you get there, and, and, and of course, he, he ended up d- developing this amazing doctrine of justification um, uh, as a gift. Uh, salvation is a gift. He proved it as a gift. There's no money. Uh, forgiveness is through, through faith alone. No, no money you have to pay you forgiveness. Everything is a gift. And, and also, he proved that we are headed on the base of what Christ did for us here. We're headed for heaven. And no one can stop you. No one can block you. No demons can block you because it's your access to heaven through his finished works. Well, uh, that's amazing. But guess what? There's more. What could be more? I mean, saved by justified, no, no guilt, no more. Uh, all of sins forgiven, headed for heaven. Well, what's more is what God is now waiting for heaven. He is wants to save you now, not only save you so someday be in heaven, but he wants to bring heaven on earth through you and through me. This is Jesus, that's what 6, 7, and 8 discusses. The sanctification is, is not just justified, we're not just justified, but we're also sanctified by grace through faith to start with. Amen? And, and so he did, in other words, he just didn't cover us. Justification is like covering, like uh, Imputed righteousness, it means only a cover, not inside, uh, but uh, alien righteousness, so on and so forth. But the, Romans 6 talks about infused righteousness. In other words, he did something not only for us, but also he actually did something to us. Is this too much for you? He did something to, in, he included us in his death. So, because the Bible says in Romans 6, you see, Luther stopped at 6, but we keep going because there's 6. We have to discover something even greater that he's bringing heaven on earth by bringing the Holy Spirit to not just cover us and sort of whisper to us, guide us, but he actually to invade us, to fill us. So we are invaded, we are, we are married, that union. With Christ, it's he accomplished union not just to manifest in heaven, but he wants to manifest his union right here on earth. On, you know, and, and it's uh, both we're sons and, and daughters, but also we're, Romans 6, we're, we're his bride. He says we're married to the resurrected one. So through the, to the, to the body of Christ, we died to the law. And through the resurrected Christ, we are married to him. In other words, we're not his girlfriend. Do you understand? Some, sometime we act like we're a girl, girlfriend, we go on a date with Jesus. No, that's, that's not what he died for. He died to marry you. Romans 7 verse 4 says we are married. Say married. <laughs> we are married to the resurrected Christ. Amen? That's really good news. Yeah. Then people can see us here on earth. People don't know the Lord. They see us married to Jesus. We, they see us as sons and daughters, and they see us as bride. Wow. Come on. So there it is in the Bible, in Romans 6, 6 says we have been co-crucified with Christ. Co means really, uh, it's not even a word, it's just prefix. It, it, it makes the, the, the most uh, intimate union is through the word co. You know, if you study in Greek. It's in the Bulgarian Bible, but it wasn't in English. Now it's coming in English Bibles. Beginning to, to uh, they begin to say that. But once we read it, then we begin to manifest and believe it. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we're co- co-crucified. Uh, and in other words, it's not Christ dying alone on the cross. He incorporates, we died with him. Yeah. Is that too much for you? Just 
if your brain, if your mind is, 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 is bothering you right now, just, just tell it to shut up, just to receive the word, because this is in the word. Often our minds don't un- help us understand because our minds is performance-based, okay? So we only recognize, our mind naturally recognize only what we have felt, experienced, you know, physically. But physically, we never were on the cross, right? So the mind goes, that never happened. But the Bible says it does. So what are you going to believe, your brain or the mind or the, or the, the, the Bible? It's the brain against the Bible. <laughs> So if I were you, I ignore what your brain is saying to you, and I'll just receive the truth that we have been co-crucified with Christ. Then when you, then you go, uh, in fact, one of us students, we have an amazing school, a supernatural built in uh, Harrisburg, where we're baseline, and our base as well as in New York City, and soon in September, we're opening a third school in Washington, D.C. So if you have any friends there, if you ever visit, stop by and see our school. But anyways... Um, it, it, uh, one of our students, totally believing this uh, amazing revelation, she was there at the Golgotha. She says, this is where I died. This is where I was crucified. I mean, she was caught in this, like, uh, 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 some sort of a trance. And after a while, I was, okay, we, we need to move because the other true group is coming behind us. That, Ma'am, would you move? And she said, I was crucified here. And then when she got to the grave, she collapse inside the grave because it says we've been co-buried so this is where i was buried come on finally the gardener says ma'am you need to leave okay because we're closing five o'clock move i was buried here as she was wilding these visionary uh, imaginary clothes clothing because he he was wrapped in these uh linens uh, Bitterly, but he w- they were not. He was not wrapped like Lazarus. Lazarus was poor, and he was just wrapped like that. But he was buried with the rich, and the rich get uh, to be sort of like a mumming effect, kind of like a, the tradition from Egypt. So they will soak the the cloth with uh, uh, these spices and things and liquid. Uh, they said seventy liters of that 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 they brought him with them quickly, and that became. After a day or two, it became hardened because these things harden in a, in a dry Middle Eastern air. And so when he was resurrected, it, he, it wasn't unwrapped like Lazarus. He just wa- went right through. His body went right through like the wall. He went right through this mummy, uh, this cocoon of sort. So when Peter and, and John ran, by the way, I just read that from uh, John G. Lake, and I, I, I want to give him credit because I, I, I never know these things. And then I studied the burial of the rich, and you can verify that this is exactly what they're doing. But John G. Lake being a doctor, have you heard of John G. Lake, an amazing revivalist, great uh, man of God? So he discovered that. So I read it. So that cocoon was intact when they went, and they saw that there was no body there. And the cocoon was still intact, so that's how they knew it was a supernatural <sighs> resurrection anyway so is resurrected cocoon no cocoon is resurrected you know uh, apparently someone must have taken that cocoon away because there's evidence that he was resurrected supernatural so uh anyhow we do not need the cocoon necessarily to believe it we know that he was raised from the dead and the point is we were buried in that cocoon with him and we were also raised i'm talking about spiritual death, spiritual burial, spiritual resurrection, not physical, of course. In his case, it was physical, but he included our deadness from Adam, our deadness. So we, we, the deadness meaning, you know, Adam didn't die physically, but when he ate from the tree, the, the Lord says, you, you're going to die. The day you eat from that tree, you're going to die, meaning spiritually. He, he, did, he lived 930 years or so, but spiritually he died, meaning he was separated. That separates, amen? So that's our spiritual. So he separated uh, with the lie, listening to the lie and believing the lies and not trusting the Lord. He became separated in such a way that even God could not bring him back. He couldn't bring him back. I, 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 uh, he forgave him. Of course, you know, he's, uh, re- he was remorseful of what they did. They felt ashamed immediately, and they, they were separated from God. Um, but they could not say, oh, sorry, God, please forgive us and get us back. He couldn't. Yes, he was forgiven, 
But we need more than forgiveness. We need to be fixed. We need to be reunited with the Lord. Because we were born to be one with him. And that's what Jesus came to do. Not just to forgive us, which he did. Awesome. Praise the Lord. But also he, he came to unite us with the Lord. So, we are, so how he did it through his death, bare resurrection. So he united us with his death that put the end of the old you. Hallelujah. He didn't just die to set you free from your sins. He died to set you free from you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's the big problem. And to set us free from you. <laughs> Freedom from you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and set us free from each other. So we could be free from that old ego spirit that was possessing us. And now we can love each other and we can support each other. We can bless each other and, and, and protect each other. Amen? No more, uh, you know, this is an evil free zone. The body of Christ. There's no evil in us. It went on the cross. So we're, in a sense, evil-free zone. Ooh, that's awesome. So when people, not believers come in, even Christians, unbelievers come in the midst, they feel freedom from evil. They see in us love. They see in us joy. In a moment, I'm going to pick up the joy fiddle, and I'm going to release this, this extra joy. How many want some more joy? Because... We were, we were at, 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 to start with it, we started with Bethlehem in, in the, uh, the, the, where the, the shepherd, the, where the angels showed up to the shepherd where Jesus was born. And they say, we bring you good news. It's Jesus is born. The Savior of the world is born. We bring you good news with great joy. So brothers and sisters, the, the appearing of Christ, even as a baby, started the, the, this joy explosion on the earth. And the angels were vibrating and said, we bring you good news. Be not afraid. Be, be good news of great joy. What's the great joy? The great joy is that soon, within 30-some years, he will face our deadness. He was, uh, I mean, of course, he, he faced our sicknesses uh, even before he died. And because, you know, he, he was um, healing everywhere he went. Christ healed tonight, today. Somebody was going to get healed. I expect that. I, and, uh, but... Uh, I love the atmosphere of joy. I, I got some of these joy angels hanging out with me. And, and I'm just going to release, and I'm going to leave some of them here. I got extra angels, so if you want some of them, just get them, because I'm going to assign them for you here. These are the joy angels, amen? They're not the corrective kind. They're the happy angels, the grace angels, the joy angels. Why are you getting quiet? <laughs> There is a pr there is a different kinds of angels, but I hang around with the joy angels. They hang around me anyway. They like me, and uh, because God made me to know His joy, I was a slave of of, of humanism, a slave of religion. I was exalting my own uh, my own uh, cult of being rock star and so forth. And He set me free. When I said that earlier, I didn't feel free uh, when I came to America. When I went to a free country. Uh, but after I met the Jesus people and they introduced me to Christ, that's the first time I felt free inside. It's one thing to get Georgian out of communism. It's another thing to get the communist out of Georgian. <laughs> Only Jesus can do that. Come on, Come on somebody. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Wow. So, so, um, so, okay, I just better stop and pick up the joy fiddle because there's great joy of how... Of the, of the salvation of the Lord, of the greatness of the Lord, of what he accomplished is to be celebrated. And we're called to celebrate his accomplishment. And across the barrier, the resident cocos were co-buried, co-raised. That's a lot of cocoa right there. You get a drink of that. And that's my wife's favorite drink, cocoa. She, she, her, she, her middle name is now cocoa. She names herself cocoa because she's totally into being cocos for co co Because that, uh, enables you to believe that you also co-seated. That's another level of cocoa. Co-seated. Where? I mean, physically here, but spiritually, your spirit is co-seated with Christ, in Christ, on the place he's seated. Where is he? He's on throne. Yeah. Come on. So we're seated on a place of authority because he, he didn't just uh, bring us to heaven someday, but, but through us physically here, through our spirit in our body, he wants to restore his authority on earth. Heaven wants to rule the earth. 
with love, with joy, with peace. Come on. Come on. With peace. We've been going to Bethlehem for, for 12 years. We're the only first American group, or even we have people from UK, the first Western group that slept in Bethel, in, in Bethlehem. Other groups come and go and they leave, but we stayed in there. To, and we sleep like babies. <laughs> it's an amazing five-star hotel for half the price of three-star in Jerusalem. I go, this is a Jewish deal. I can't pass by. This, this is. So we're staying here. Nice, fat, you know. And then we got access to the, to, the, to the refugee camps, which is second largest, second most dangerous refugee camp. But somehow through, the, through music, through praise, through joy. You know what joy does? It paralyzes the demons. They cannot, sustain, they cannot function in, in joy. They function in depression. They function in rejection and, and all that. But they cannot, they, they just, it's like scratching a, a board on there. Oh, no. And they just leave. If you want to clear the demonic from your area, just begin to rejoice publicly. Rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm going to do that, and I'm just, I believe that there will be sicknesses that are going to leave. Uh, also, depression spirit, things that try to uh, connect you with the lie. Yeah. Amen. We are, we are born for freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from fear. Freedom from depression. Freedom from uh, uh, terrible uh, addictions and things like that. We are we're to, to be free in Christ. Amen. Free to be his bride. Free to be his beloved bride. Free to be his sons and daughters. So he's taken out of the, the, the orphan spirit. And I just want to infuse some of that. I want to infuse some of that freedom from the orphan spirit. I had it. You know, but God conquered that inside me. And see, so you're no longer orphan. You're not striving. I am, I fully accepted you in Christ. You accepted my son. I accept you fully. You're my son. Ooh, I didn't have a dad. So God just restored me to, because he's my dad now. Yeah. And if you had a good dad, praise the Lord, but God is even better. So there's another level for you. If you didn't have a good dad or abusive, well, now we have a great dad. Yeah. And he's going to manifest and demonstrate for you today. How many are ready to accept being seated on the top of the world? You're actually on the top of the world, above. You know, often people talk about second heaven and demons and fighting. You know, second heaven is actually below your feet. Yeah. There is a second heaven, but it's below your feet. The enemy is under our feet. And, and because we are seated on the third heaven, the real heaven. So every other heavens, whatever they're many, they're under our feet. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for, uh, for celebration. Ooh. And this is how we release the, the love for Jesus for, to orphans, to widows. We have about 600 children, 200 of them, uh, part of Heidi's, uh, we support. Heidi is a dear friend of Heidi Baker in Mozambique. So 200 of us, uh, these children are in, under her care that we support. Then we have another 200 um, uh, in uh, the Southeast Asia. And, and we have ch children, that 200 are rescued from trafficking, which is another level beyond just poverty, but with traffic is just abuse, massive abuse. So, so we have total of 600, 200 are just orphaned, poor, and another 200 actually rescued from Burma, child trafficking for soldiers, child soldiers in Burma. Burma is a small country. It's got the largest trafficking uh, soldier, child, child soldier army in the world. 50,000 children are carrying machine guns and so forth. And, uh, and then sex trafficking in Thailand and, and Cambodia. So we are just releasing not just them from that, but also we're releasing the orphan spirit to them. And, and we, we're raising uh, the leaders of tomorrow. Yeah. The slaves of today are the leaders of tomorrow. Wow. Amen. That's what God says. So that's why we, we support them all the way through college. So this is our, our program, our idea. Anyways, I'm going to grab the joy fiddle. And, and I want you to put your dancing shoes. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, in fact, it might be too much to dance over there. If you want to dance there, you can come here. We're just going to celebrate. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh, by the way, I, I'm really good friends with uh, uh, Brian Simmons. Brian Simmons is a, 
uh, the translator of the, mess of the Passion Translation. Anybody knows the Passion Translation? How many read the Passion? It's a great translation. Pastors uh, read it. Um, and uh, he was with us in Israel. And we're coming in Rome uh, in the end of May. Actually, that's the closest place we get uh, to you guys this year. Uh, we, we do these revival tours. We've done two times revival tours in, in, in England, and, and we love it in the U.K. So uh, in Rome, we're going to have a five, five days of intense study in the book of Romans. Um, I, I love this uh, translation. Um, and it says this for, for, for his, this is a Colossians actually, chapter 2, verse, verse 11. For, for he is the fullness of the deity, for he is the, the complete fullness of the deity living in human form. This was Jesus. But now to the Holy Spirit, the same thing is for you. He lives in the fullness, in, in the complete uh, de de deity, lives inside your spirit. He's a spirit, and so we, those who join the Lord is one spirit. And our, our own completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness in, overflows within us. He's the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. Every kingdom and authority lives inside you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are the rulers of the universe. And they, it has given us a portion of that leadership so we could rule the world God's way. Amen. Not allow the darkness to just torture the people but to be filled with 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 love amen uh and says verse verse 11 through our union with him we've experienced the circumcision of the heart it was funny preaching that in the jewish brothers <laughs> that was so funny because they get it you know like i don't know if you're circumcised or not but but jews are circumcised so it was a, a born-again believers we had a last friday in a like a um a service with them and they know a circumcision is not uh, a, a slow process. Yeah. A sanctification is portrayed like a slow process. But uh, that's, that's no slow process in a, in a circumcision. <laughs> Boom. You know, <laughs> it, you know, if you ask a, a Jewish friend, they're not going to say, are you circumcised? They're not going to say, well, I'm getting there. <laughs> you know, and that's how we treat sanctification. But sanctification is actually as swift as justification. Amen. And so, so he says, uh, so through our union with him, so believing, receiving the Lord as your, as your bridegroom, as your love, you know, in that very moment, you experience the circumcision, the cutting away from the old, and our guilt, uh, all guilt and power of sin has been cut away and is now extinct. Hello, the old is extinct. It's like whatever it used to be, it's kind of like a dinosaur, it's dead, buried, it's extinct. Whoa, praise the Lord. That's what Jesus, that's why I'm so happy, so rejoicing. Great joy, brothers. Says the good news is with great joy. Wow, wow. And it's now extinct because of what Christ the anointed one has accomplished for us and in us. Isn't that good? Yeah. Are you ready to celebrate? Before I forget, I have little brochures. Somebody in this door can have it for those who may be interested in Rome, the School of Romans. It's amazing. I just printed them just for you. Okay. You ready? It's going to explode. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go pa boom. Just a deluge of joy is going to just follow. How many are ready? Okay, stand up and get ready. You don't want to fall over there. Maybe come down if you want to activate. Okay, here we go. Ah. How you sing an ending song. How you save my soul. I could dance a thousand miles. Because of your great love
your face See you smiling over us Unseen angels celebrate Joy, joy, joy Okay, next one is a really Jewish song. And in the Bible, Psalm 150 says, I will praise you with a single dance or I will praise you with the, with the group dance. So group dance means grab about three or four people, make a circle. That's the group dance. So grab about your friends. Come on, some of you join up. If you don't, if you have any problem with mobility, jump inside one of those circles. You're going to be healed. If you have a problem with mobility, jump. N neck problems, wrist problems, uh, uh, the knee problem, God's going to heal you. So jump inside one of those circles. All right, make these circles, guys. We need some more volunteers to make circles. And, and we're going to experience God's healing power. It's a kingdom celebration Come on. tonight. How many have mobility problem with wrist or pain, jump inside the circle and God's going to heal you today, right in front of everybody.
to stay. So I just release that permanent anointing of Christ inside you, re rejoicing you. He has made me glad. Lord, I just release the people of God to release the joy of heaven on earth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord. Guys, you like it? Did you have fun? Look at the children. Love it. Isn't that great? <laughs> 